to start stream like when they're bigger games, you know? Bigger games, you don't want to just like start like a half hour, especially like an RPG. You don't want to start like half an hour before your stream ends, right? But if it's a couple hours, who cares? It's always strategic. Hello, Firefly. Have you been playing Lego Racers? How's that going? Boop -a -doop. I'm really bad at arcade games. This is what you'll quickly learn. In hours? Yeah. It doesn't seem like a, a super long game. Oh, dude, listen to this music. What a sick remix. Yeah, my history here, I've played a decent amount of Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Uh, I'm really bad at Galaga, like really bad at Galaga. I've never played Galaxian. So my understanding is that's pretty much just like Space Invaders, right? Like that's the kind of game it is. But yeah, sure enough, my chat is broken. Hopefully it'll it'll come up sometime. That's just how the issues work. Pole position, I've never been good at. And Dig Dug, I don't, I don't know where I rank on Dig Dug. I've played it before a few times, you know? You just kind of, uh, we wing it. Shadow. I always forget that they have, like, weird names. Like, their nicknames aren't their actual names. Alright. Ooh, look at Pac-Man just punching away. Yeah, how's everyone doing? Welcome to, uh, what is today? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Dude, I honestly had to think about it there for a second. Here for Dig Dug? A little ways away. I'm doing pretty well. I can't, I can't complain. I mean, I could complain, but I don't need to. I'm doing all right. I get fucked up. I'm on the run, dude. They'll never take me. I don't know their patterns. I know some people are like Pac Man experts. Not me, though. I did it. I did it. Oh yeah, Pac-Man just has the same board over and over, and it's just, the ghosts just get faster, right? This is why Billy Mitchell's like the Pac-Man god. Because he just memorizes it all. I'm not good enough to like eat all the ghosts, though. Rank my Pac-Man strategies on a scale of 1 to 10. Aw, oh, orange dude. He faked me out, yo. Hello, Red. How you doing? Level three. Oh, a cutscene, baby. You didn't go down! Pac-Man, you fool. 
Extra life, baby. We're so good at Pac-Man. Now here's a here's gonna be a real noob question here that anyone that's an arcade expert can answer for me. But uh when it comes to Miss Pac-Man. Oh, hold on, fun fact first. Pac-Man was created by game designer Toru Iwatani. He was just 24 at the time. The idea for the character came to him when he removed pizza. a slice from a pizza. He was also partly inspired by the onomatopoeic phrase Paku Paku, Paku, Paku meaning means chomp chomp in the kanji. <laughs> Symbol for the word Taberu meaning to eat. To make the game more kawaii cute. Iwatani designed the ghosts in bright colors and gave them large doa eyes. Hyper cheese. Hyper cheese indeed. I, all my Pac-Man knowledge comes from uh, Scott Pilgrim. What can I say? Uh, oh yeah, Miss Pac-Man. Do do the boards do the boards change in Miss Pac-Man, or is that I only played the Genesis version of Miss Pac-Man really? I know it has like a story when it comes to uh, when it comes to to that. They change in both games. When do they change in this game? That was close. Dude, I want the orange. Oh, it's gone. Check this out. Watch the jukes. Professional Pac-Man player right here. Just kidding. <laughs> what round am I on? I'm dead. Died. I'm gonna beat my own score, though. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I put in two credits. I don't know what that does. Oh, tips! Watch for Pinky. Clyde is not very smart. Wow, look at these fun facts. One more. One more, baby. They know there's there's smart AI. Look, all the uh, all the ghosts work independently of each other in Pac-Man. They all have their own strategies, and that's how people like master this game. In 2010, Iwatani told Wired that Pac-Man particularly targeted female players. When you think about things women like, you think about fashion or fortune telling. I do remember these or quotes. Or food actually. or dating boyfriends. So I decided to theme the game around eating. There is absolutely nothing problematic about this statement. And that's why that's why Miss Pac-Man is the thing, right? Because they're like, oh, we'll put a bow on, on Pac-Man's head, and that'll really get the ladies going. It's a different time, I guess. Different, different time. So really, all the people with a perfect game of Pac-Man, it's just like memorization, right? Like, you just have a set route that you do every time. Oh, dude, give me them all. Oh, I didn't turn. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I got greedy. I thought for sure that would be it. I wanted it so bad. Oh, I could have had it there, too. The stick is not super responsive. Oh god. Do I have a goal for each game? I think we're just gonna play a few games of each, really. My goal is to no more than two hours in this game. Um because I wanna get I wanna get through the two basketball games tonight too. Um, I was gonna say like, oh, we'll just go for high scores, but then I found out that this game, most high scores just start at zero. So, there's no- there's nothing to beat with the problem. Oh, 
Oh, he's faster than me. What a bully. Now, if you guys have any fun challenges for me to compete for here, you know, I'm, I'm open to it. Didn't work at all. Oh, oh God. The stick is, it's fucking me, dude. You gotta get the power pellet last. That doesn't sound like a fun challenge. I am using the D-pad right now, actually, because the N64 stick is, like, even worse. Some would say it's sacrilege to be, uh... to be using anything but an analog stick for a game like this, but... Have you seen the N64 stick? Dude, I missed the I missed my own high score by seventy points. <laughs> All right, one more game, then we're switching over to something else. Then we can switch over to Miss Pac Man, as you do. I'm, I'm doing the game right now, alright? I'll get to the second stage. You'll see. He missed it again! Dude, I want to start over. <laughs> I choke every time. to main menu. Whoops. Hey at, least, hey, at least it remembers your high scores in this game. Very nice of them. I want to eat them all. I really do. There's one flaw in my plan, though. Lots of trips. The idea of eating a power pill to give Pac-Man super strength came partly from the cartoon Popeye and his love of spinach. Oh, Popeye. And partly from the Japanese concept of Kokura, spirit or life force. It's considered one of the first examples of a power-up in video game history. Pac-Man manufacturer Namco installed the first machine in a movie theater in Shibuya. Tokyo, on the 22nd of May 1980. The game was only a moderate success until its blockbusting U.S. launch the following October. The U.S. loves it, baby. Ideas, you're burning through all these facts. Thank you for the bits. Pac-Man's got a lot of lore, what can I say? I'm doing so bad right now. Actually worse. Yeah. Yeah.
Let's get greedy, baby. No, let's not. <laughs> let's just go to the next level. How's the uh, audio levels? That one's hard with these arcade games. They're, they're always really quiet, and then they just get really loud whenever, like, something happens. It's the arcade way of doing things. Oh. <laughs> bad death. Bad death. Bad death. It's weird to think that, like, Pac-Man is on the N64, you know? I don't know why. In my head, I'm just like, this is weird that I'm playing this right now. I'll never do it. My first game was my best game. I did like exactly the same skill wise. On every single game I played there. Never getting to stage two. No, I'm not good enough. It's fine. Maybe, maybe the option here is to do it in this Pac-Man. Oh God, the eating noise is so much more annoying. I mean, I guess so. Oh yeah, the fruit moves in this Pac-Man. Very cool. No. We're just going for survivability here. This Pac-Man is pretty fast, yeah. I'm really wasting these power pellets. I was trying to go down there. I'm the the, 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 the D-pad is uh not working for me here. I want the strawberry. No. The orange got me. Of all of all the ones to get me had to be orange. Forgot this one has like a plot. The last smooching. That was a close call right there. I forgot that I ate that one already. What a bad game. Try it again. Just a poor play for me. We only got one act out of that bad boy.
That was my bad. Went for the power pellet too early. Think you'll wake up for it? I know you will. I did it! I got them all! Oh god. Oh god. Sound corruption. No, it's so scary. I can't listen to it. It's so bad. <laughs> it's unfixable. Hold on. We gotta play the game out. I can't, I can't let it die. I gotta turn it down a little bit, though. In 2009, the magazine Game Informer compiled a top 200 games of all time list. Oh shit, Ms. I froze it when I Pac-Man got the number 10 spot and earned the praise that it trumped the original in nearly every way. Pac-Man did receive at least a respectable ranking of number 52. In Pac-Man, the ghost's American names are Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde, and descended Clyde. from the original Japanese characters Fickle, Chaser, Ambusher, and Stupid. For Ms. Pac-Man, Midway changed the orange, slowest ghost from Clyde to Sue. Probably a smart idea to not call them stupid. Man, that was a good game I had going, too. It's, to, it's the curse of the N64, you know? Just the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes you get a little corruption. When do I start being able to eat pretzels? That's when I think the game gets real good, when they let you eat pretzels. McTeez, are you really good at Pac-Man? I feel like if anyone here is really good at Pac-Man, it's probably you. Mm. <laughs> that was terrifying. Actually scary. Why am I cutting you out of the Pac-Man game? Because you're a baby. Say that first. I didn't call you a baby. I called Biddy a baby. He knows it. Hello, Hiri. What's wrong with these sounds? Here, just watch the plot. You'll understand where the sounds come from. Different level. Though. Actually, different board. I'm wasting these power pellets. They're just buying me time. God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> he didn't go up when I want him to go up. Sorry. She didn't go up. I miss Pac-Man now. I keep forgetting I'm not playing Pac-Man anymore. Oh, no! I played chicken and I lost.
Hello, Robo. Oh, this is the pretzel stage. <gasps> I want the pretzel, dude. Most arcade style Ms. Pac Man units have 133, 134, or 141 levels. I want the like pretzel any so arcade bad. game, it can get glitchy and unable to handle the speed and number of internal processes on its most intense levels. However, legend has is that on the right machine. A player can climb past Ashman's score of 933, 580, watch their score of 1000. Oh, 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 tick back over to zero, and just keep gobbling. Oh, oh. The world record score is worth about 93. Oh, 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 pack dots <laughs> eaten. Oh, are 465 oh, 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 pairs. Oh, oh. Wow, caps. A lot of pairs. That's a lot of pairs. Ooh, the trifecta, let's go. <laughs> Bring your quarter up, thank you for the bits. <laughs> Let's go. How many arcades do you think still run on quarters in like the year 2020? I'm actually kind of curious. There are actually, I was at an arcade probably about too slow. I think I'm slower when I'm eating. I think that's the deal. Uh, I was at an arcade probably like five years ago that still had like, was quarter based. It was blowing my mind that this is still a thing. The big arcade around here is like everything's on free play and you just buy like a wristband for the day. I think that's how a lot of places are doing it now. <gasps> He's done it again! He can't be stopped! They said a legend was born and it's me, I'm the legend. I suppose arcade bars probably do still do like the quarter stuff, huh? I still have some tokens from a place that I used to go to play DDR all the time. That was a long time ago, though. This is not my most efficient route, but it's working, so I guess we'll go for it. No, 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 no. Maybe it's the romantic animations between levels. The 1982 arcade wedding of a Des Moines, Iowa couple featured a Pac-Man cake in a honeymoon suite equipped with a cabinet. The news story reported that the couple said Pac-Man, the popular video game, and its more recent counterpart, Ms. Pac-Man mean so much to them they decided to exchange vows in the presence of the machines. Of the man himself, Pac-Man. Imagine loving Pac-Man so much that you marry Pac-Man. I mean, not marry Pac-Man, but marry to the thought of Pac-Man. And his muscular body. You can't marry Pac-Man. Alright, Pac-Man's a lone wolf. Oh, dude, I'm killing it! What a run. 
You think Pac-Man and this Pac-Man are brother and sister? Is that the lore? We might get some more story if I can really if I can pull this level off. Shit. Not a good start. Are there other Pac people? I think probably. I think I've seen isn't there a Pac-Man cartoon? I feel like I've seen some of that. Oh, this level's got apples, dude. Oh man, it goes by so fast. Who's eating all the ghosts on this level? I feel like no one. Oh god, I'm fucked. Actually, <gasps> oh. Produced by Hanna Barbera, Pac Man ran on ABC for two seasons starting in 1982 and featured Pac Man, his wife, renamed and restyled as Pepper Pac Man, Pac Baby, the ghosts, and a host of new characters. In the short lived show, the characters lived on and worked to gather power pellets in the largely spherical Story. realm of Pac Land. The chase sequence. This is where they make babies, baby. I actually own a Pac-Man vinyl record, and it has a Pac-Man baby on the cover. So I know Pac-Man babies exist. Pac-Land's the worst Smash stage? I think you might be wrong. It's pretty close, but I think the one the one giant level that there is is way worse. The like Kirby cooking level. Like the great the great chef escape. I don't know what the fuck that level's called. You know the one I'm talking about. You know what? That was a pretty good run, I will say. Donkey Kong's also a pretty bad one. What do you mean the punch out level rules? I think that's a good one to end on. Oh, this one's actually got a high score. Breaking news Daniel Breaking Kalua news. confirms his live action Barney movie <laughs> Wait, is happening what? in it. <laughs> Will be darker than the OG TV show. Barney taught us I love you. Do you love me? Won't you say you love me too? That's one of the first songs I remember, and what happens when that isn't true? I can't tell if this is a real thing, or if this is satire. Oh, the K-pop emotes, there they go. Alright, this is where you find out how shit I am at Galaga. This one's actually got a high score for me to try to compete with, though. Don't I want, like, where's the ones that take my ship? Because I want them to take my ship, right? It's just Galaga 101. Oh, we'll twin ship by the end of this, I promise. I just don't know how it works. I, I'm not, I'm so shit at Galaga. I played that, what was the Galaga re-release that they did? So, you may know about Galaga, but what Galaga. you probably don't know is that this legendary <laughs> game wasn't the first in the franchise. In 1979, Galaxian was released oh, by Namco for Japanese audiences and by co-publisher Midway. In the United States, Space was a pretty popular theme in the late 70s and early 80s. So it made oh, sense shit. that this game would strike a chord with audiences. It was advanced for the time and was ported to the first Apple computer as well as the Atari 2600 and Commodore 64. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Fred. And McDee's? Man, I should have played Galaxian first, huh? Because that would have been smarter. Oh, challenging stage. I didn't get any K-pop emotes either. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some on my own though. Uh but yeah, thank you. I thank you everyone for the bits. I'm on a hype train, what the fuck? This is what happens when there's too many bit givers at once. <laughs> These ones, like, breathe. 
scam train. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh. Dude, I'm gonna get the high score on my first game. I haven't lost a ship yet. I'm surprised. Steam K D A all out. Hell yeah. Does that have a release date yet? I know they're doing another song. God. I'm so not focused here. So, gaming companies can get a little weird when it comes to crossovers. Oh god. Nevertheless, this one by Bandai Namco has to take the cake. Mm, cake. In 2015, the game company launched Galaga Tekken. Galaga. The game looks like Galaga. Stop but saying instead it. of shooting at ships, you it. are trying to get past characters of the Tekken game franchise. This crossover was so weird that many thought it was an April's Fool's prank. April's Fools. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your viewpoint, it wasn't. That's a nice move! Holy shit. Actually, thank you for the gift subs. I really appreciate That's the support, nice everyone. Move. I'm just trying to stay focused. Keep my cool. Oh, I play Gala Galaga. I'm doing better than I usually do at this game, honestly. I'm actually really trash at this game. I don't remember how, like, the capture stuff works. Someone's gotta give me a reminder. My next game, I'll, I'll do a capture. I'll try to capture another ship. Do I just wait for one to take me? Do I have to shoot one once? Alright, here, yeah, I've also gotten zero emos. <laughs> Fuck. I can't stress enough, though. I really do appreciate everything. Thank you. Ooh, I'm dead. I listen, I probably listen to more K pop than anyone else in this channel, is the sad truth of my existence at this point. It's all I've listened to for like the past year. That and uh, mouth albums. Ooh, I can't get this one guy. This one little bug. Hey, hey, hey! Got him. More than Biddy? I I'm willing to bet yes, actually. I even li I listened to the new Luna album today. It wasn't that good. There's a couple good songs on it, but most of it was just like, eh. That's how on on point I am with my uh, K-pop listening. <laughs> I don't stand Luna. I will say. I manifested Carly Rae Jepsen tweeting about her iconic first pitch today. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I actually, I forgot about that pitch until you posted that. It's a really good pitch, I will say. I do, I do appreciate a good celebrity pitch fail, you know? Oh god. Lost is me. one of those shows that is bound to include a lot of video game and geek. Fuck. There's so much going on. The plots of this show is very reminiscent of old school mysteries of the 80s and 90s. Gamers will be happy to know that Lost went past the typical film and show references to highlight a classic video game. The producers were such big fans of Galaga and played Galaga. it on downtime that they named a submarine in the show after the game. KPOP Selfie Shaky Eyes. This is good music, huh? So how do I, okay, how do I get, how do I get the dual ship? Do I just have to wait for one to come capture me? Is that the deal? And then you have to shoot it down after? I can't remember. It's been so long since I've played this game. Okay, but what do I do after, okay, shoot the capture, all right. Don't shoot my ship. I'm gonna fuck this up, for sure. I feel like I had... 
a good enough run there that like we don't have to play too much more of this one. But let's let's have some fun with it before I stop it. Now that all the nonsense is done, <laughs> I won't be as distracted. I'll probably still be really distracted. Shit. Take me! Can you only get two? Is that the deal? Wait, what do I do? Did I fuck up? I fucked up. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh no. When a game has been around as long as Galaga, Galaga, it makes sense that it would be part of a lot of different crossover situations. In addition to Tekken, another That's popular it, like, franchise has joined forces with this arcade classic. In 2015, gaming fans could play Space Galaga, a crossover between Space Dandy and Galaga. It was a gaming app for the smartphone and allowed for level customizations. We can't argue with the fact that this is a pretty neat way to pass the time. No, this isn't, this isn't Space Galaga. Oh, take me. Alright, so, when I shoot the guy in front... Yeah, this is where I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Oh, like that. He's on it. Wind blades. Ugh. All right, this is where things get crazy. Fuck! I fucked up. I fucked up already. I'm sorry. <laughs> All that work for nothing. Red, holy shit. TFW no K-pop cheer emote. Also Galaga. Also Galaga. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys. Now nah, we got another chance at this. Nope. Yeah, he's done it again. He's doing the thing! Oh, I fucked up. I wanted all of them, man. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> it continues. <laughs> choo choo. Holy shit. It's over. It's over. Oh, I lost my ship. I'm getting too distracted. I'm I can breathe now. What is that? Is that was that a reward emote? It does kind of look like an Among Us, doesn't it? Looks like a alien hominid. We want to really kick it back to the Flash days. Look at that. This game's way worse than the one where I only had one ship, but...
All right. Ugh. You think that's Phoenix, right? Objection. Hit. For the balls. What is what is that balls emote? Who comes up with these things? No, I like the name. Ah, no, you know what? Let's go sheep like. Bah. All right, what's next? Galaxian? Man, I should have like flipped these around so I wasn't doing like back to back of the same kind of game. Bonus Galaxip for 5,000 points. Oh God, this is like a worse. Why do I have pl a plunger sticking out of me? This is so much harder. Oh uh, yeah, but uh, okay, so for the list, a couple things to note. Uh, coming up, so tonight the plan is we're gonna play through this game, and then we're gonna play uh, two NBA games tonight. Tomorrow is gonna be, or not tomorrow, Thursday is gonna be Majora's Mask. That got bumped up to split up the NBA block. Uh, and then right before stream, Pupper also cashed in, and between Ready to Rumble, Boxing, and Resident Evil will be Paper Mario. So, there are some changes in the list. There's a lot to, uh, go off of here. Dude, this is so much harder than Galaga. Also way more annoying. Can't even beat one level. Come on, man. We gotta at least beat one level. Yeah, everyone enjoy your emotes. I did nothing. You all did it. Yourselves. <laughs> Again, appreciate the support. It's not every day I get a hype train. Did I play the RE2 remake? I did, yeah. I've actually never played the original RE2 beyond like an hour of it. But, uh... I did play through all the remakes, so I'm kind of curious to see like the differences between them. But it's been long enough since I played the remake that like... I want to know. If I'm going to remember a lot of it or not. The hardest thing for me is going to be... I think Resident Evil 2 has ink ribbons, right? I think that's going to be the hardest thing for me. Yeah, this is hard. And I think we have to just make sure to not get, like, stuck. I, I remember when I played Code Veronica, there's a part in that game where you have to fight, like, whatever, I think it's like Tyrant or whatever, you have to fight on like an airship, and I remember getting to that, like you're in like the back of a, a plane, like in a cargo hold, and I remember getting to that point and I just didn't have enough ammo to beat him, and there was no way to backtrack, so my game save was just fucked, like there was no way for me to beat the game. And that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, well, I gotta make sure to not have this problem. RE7 has that stuff on like the hardest difficulty, it doesn't on easier difficulties. Like, the normal difficulty doesn't have that stuff. It's just, like, the, the hardest difficulty. The Madhouse difficulty, I think it's called. Um, I, I guess now, too, we should figure out, like... Because Resident Evil 2 is pretty soon. 
Like, what do we do in that game? Do we just play through, like... Because there's two different stories, right? Like a story A and a story B. Like, how do how do we figure that out? Honestly, I don't think people want to see me play through that whole game twice. <laughs> so, do I just pick a character? Like, is that the deal? I don't know. We got some time to figure it out. Because both, both Majora's Mask and Paper Mario will take a de decent amount of time. Uh, this game doesn't feel great. <laughs> this feels like early arcade game for sure. I'm not having a good time with it. I can't remember, does Donkey Kong 64 have Donkey Kong Arcade in it? Or is it just Jetpack? Everyone has been saying a lot of very kind things and I am overwhelmed. Thank you all. If I could kiss each and every one of you on the mouth, I would, but I am not allowed. Coronavirus. I got the TT emote. The TT. Nah, here he loves me. Here he would never. Here he's gonna sit on his points until he has 200,000. <laughs> That's just how he is, you know? He's a pacifist. Why do I keep playing this? This is a game. This game's not fun. I think Galaxian is the worst game on this collection, and I haven't played all of them yet. And you know what? I can confidently say that this is the worst game in the collection. I don't really care for pole position, so maybe that's a close second, but... That's, pole position is the one where, like, beating the high score in the game might actually be something I can't do. Yeah, I'm gonna switch games after this one. I think if I give each game, like, 20 minutes or whatever, like, that should be fine. Unless I have, like, a really good run. And I'll call that my, my grand opus. Uh, we do still have one more arcade collection to play, which I'm I'm more excited for that one because it's like the midway collection. But then I get to play like Joust. I like Joust. I'm a big Joust fan. I'm a big Joust head from way back. Ooh. I crash. I crash my ship. I think Joust is top three arcade games, for sure. Number one arcade game for me is Donkey Kong. Then I think Joust is probably number two. And then number three? Hmm. That's a tough one. I don't know. That's how classic I go. I was... As a kid, I was, like, so into Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Like, that was my thing in the arcade. That's the machine I always gravitated towards. As an adult, no. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is not even the best Mortal Kombat. It's got the fucking run button. Who likes that? No one. I got an extra guy. Yeah! Free guy.
can't believe I dodged that. I'm not- I don't have a lot of experience with light gun games. The only light gun game that I played a lot in the arcade was that police trainer game. You know the one I'm talking about? That, like, every arcade had for a while? We, like, shoot the balls and stuff. But I never- I've never once in my life played, uh, like, any of the Time Crisis games. Like, never been my thing. I think because those machines just intimidated me, and they were always, like, more expensive than everything else. Um, I was a big fan of House of the Dead 2 on Dreamcast. I have a light gun for my Dreamcast that I can't use because I don't own a CRT anymore. But I was really into that. Uh, I played some Area 51. I think everyone played Area 51. Area 51 was at, like, every single, like, movie theater for the longest time. I don't think I've ever seen... Wait. MNT, like, the arcade game. That's what that stands for, right? <laughs> I don't know, in my head, I, I started thinking about the fighting game that was on Super Nintendo. And I was like, was that an arcade game? Who knows? Oh, man. I'm not gonna be good at this. This is definitely my weakness, is playing a racing game. Prepare to qualify. Prepare to qualify. I think I prefer Simpsons and X-Men to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade. And I think that might be crazy talk, but for me, that's the case. Okay, I gotta, I gotta learn how to, like, steer in this game. Gotta drive like a crazy person. I love the X-Men Arcade game because you could play as Colossus, and whenever you, like, fell off a cliff, you'd go, Rah! It's such a good sound effect. Yeah, Simpsons is great, for sure. I think X-Men's the one, though, that people don't really rank, like, above others. I'm trying to think, what other, like, beat-em-ups did I play at, like, the Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> I think they always had X-Men or Simpsons, and that was, like, it. I think I played more beat-em-ups at, at Chuck E. Cheese than any other arcade. I got a hundred and second. I think we can do better than that, all right? Volume's at 50% right now. Feels loud enough for me. Trying to hit start. There we go, prepare to qualify. All right, let's go. It's been a long time since I had a stream where I just played through, like, a bunch of games in one stream. It feels nice for the numbers to, like, increase for a little bit, you know? But I am excited to play Majora's Mask. That's gonna be fun, I think. I need to find a good, like, 100% guide. I, I put up a poll on the Discord. If you haven't voted, feel free. But if I'm gonna do 100% or, or regular playthrough. And I think, uh... 100% is probably going to win. But, like, I need to find a good guide for it that I can follow that isn't, like, extensive. Like, I need something that's just, like, a short guide that just gives little one-liners about where each upgrade is so that I can kind of check them off as I go. That's what I did for Ocarina of Time, and I think it worked really well. Yeah, the only thing that's been increasing is the average. Which, uh, we're very close to a five-hour average at this point. It's at like 457 or something. I don't think I'm ever gonna place better than like 97th here. How do you get first in this? It seems impossible. Unless there's like another button that like makes you go faster. I don't know. Because it does say low in the top right corner and I don't know what that represents. I'm afraid to hit another button though. Oh, there we go. You can shift. Oh, <gasps> you can shift. It's R.
Is that the secret to beating this game? Is you have to know how to shift? Oh god. Dude, I finished a lap. Let's go. Number one. Pole Position was not only a wildly successful arcade game, but it also had its own cartoon, which wasn't related to the cartoon? game at all. What? The action in the game takes place at Fuji Speedway. Players of the game were actually lining up to play the game at arcades due to how realistic it was. Pole position is so a realistic. perfect example of amazing product placement. The billboards on the side of the road have photos of Pepsi, Dig Dug, 7-Eleven, etc. Not in this version. They've all been replaced by generic Namco logos. Big Doug we got there. Now that I know how to shift in this game, I think I find it a bit more enjoyable. I never realized that you had to shift in this game. I finished the race. I get another race. Nice, indeed. Nice, nice, nice. Fuck. The way I'm playing this game, I just have to, like, rapidly tap whatever direction I'm turning in. Oh god, there's a puddle! It's not even raining, what is that? Do I want to know? Loosh. I'm sorry about my Dig Dug play. I feel like it's not gonna be... It's not going to be up to your uh, standards. I'm not very good at Dig Dug. I could just be KDA. It's so much faster. <laughs> For the emotes. I want to do one more. I think I'm getting better at this game as I go. Holy shit. I'm actually improving. I think I finally understand how pole position works, and I'm starting to realize that it is super realistic, and it's probably the greatest game ever created. They didn't have pole... I remember... Where I grew up, there wasn't, like, an arcade, but they had, like, a, a Dairy Queen that had a bunch of arcade machines in it, and there was a game that was very similar to this that I used to play, but it was not pole position. I can't remember what it was, and I don't even think I'd recognize it if I did know. I feel like it was bright and colorful like this, and very similar. It could have just been Outrun, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm curious. Did Outrun have a regular cabinet, or did they all look like cars? 65, I'm improving. Fifth position. It's probably Outrun. Outrun was a pretty popular arcade cabinet back then. I bet that's what it was. They had that. They had Qbert, I remember. Uh, oh, I forgot to shift. Uh, and they had... What else did they have? There's one other machine. I don't think it was Breakout. I remember playing Breakout at, like, a Pizza Hut. There was a Pizza Hut that had a Breakout cabinet that I used to play. Breakout is actually... when I. <laughs> this is going to make me sound really old, but I swear it's not, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh... When I got my Atari 2600, the first game I bought for it was Breakout. <laughs> I promise I'm not that old. Not a great race. Oh, extended play! I 
And there was also that arcade machine that was like, it's like a 3D racing game and it was made to look ultra realistic and it was like a stunt type game. It was like all polygons and there was like a giant loop on the track. I'm trying to remember what that game was. It was that one I used to play sometimes too. Am I, is it, was that just called like stunt or was that hard driving? I don't actually know. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Am I crazy? I might be. Dude, I want to do one more. I'm actually really enjoying this game right now. Holy shit. Nitro Stunt Racing doesn't sound familiar. It looks like what you'd expect like a basic Saturn racing game to look like. I think I I think I really like pole position. Now what the fuck? There's something about it. They're hard to avoid. Sixty-five, seventy-nine. It's position again, man. It's got. It's hard to get the first, huh? I only know hard driving because I, weird story, I own the case to hard driving, uh, but I don't actually, for like the Genesis, but I don't actually own hard driving the game. I bought, I bought hard driving at a Goodwill once, and I didn't open it up to see like what was in it, and when I opened it, Awesome Possum was inside the case. So I have the case for hard driving, and it has the game Awesome Possum inside of it. I don't know if that's an upgrade. I think it is. I think it's an upgrade. Oh, dude, this race is going way better than the last one. True, he kicks Dr. What's-His-Face's butt. What's his name? I'm a, I'm a fake Awesome Possum fan. Dr. Machino's butt, right? I think that's the problem with Genesis, is there's a lot of games where, like, you recognize the name of them, but none of them are actually good. Like, I think about all, like, the... I, I'd use air quotes right now if I wasn't playing this game, but... I think about all the classic Genesis games, and most of them are kind of trash. Oh, race driving sounds right, actually. That might be it. I under I can't under I can't underline. <laughs> it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Are there only seven K-pop? It's just it's a small amount because they're only running it for two weeks instead of like a full month. So smaller than normal. All right, dig, Doug. Can I beat 10,000 points? I think so. I feel like this is one of the first arcade games with real, like, dynamic music. Oh, I tried to go right and he went up. This is the problem with using the D-pad. Dig Doug's real name is Tiza Hori. Hori Tizio means so wanna dig and was once married to Masuyo Kissy Toby, Kissy. the main character of Baraduke. They had three children. Teo Toby, Ataru Hori, and Susumu Hori, the latter being the main character of the Mr. Driller series.
I don't know the strategies for like dropping rocks on things. That's where I get kind of bad. I would assume that like if you follow upwards and then you get out of the way. Oh, he's too smart. Oh, fuck. Drop two rocks on level and you get the veggies. All right, I can try that. I'm so bad. What a bad game of Dig Dug that was. I'm usually not that bad. The a musical, musical legend, legend Chubby Checker recorded the original version of the Dig Dug commercial. Really? <laughs> However, this version was never used in the finished once. commercial for unknown reasons. The tape holding this recording was unearthed by Matt Osborne son of former Atari Vice President Don Osborne. Over 30 years after the airing of the famous commercial. The Chubby Checker one does sound familiar, I will say. the veggies. I got him! I want this. He got away. The one that got away. Hello, Lola Way. How you doing? Stranger Things is one of the most popular shows on Netflix. Taking place in the 80s. Get me through the wall. A group of kids deal with demons and other wacky nonsense from the upside down while also fending off high score competitors at the local arcade. In Season 2, Episode 1, Dustin's Dig Dug score is taken down by the mysterious Mad Max, who racks up quite an impressive 751, 300 points. But here's the problem with the original. Dig Dug only allowed you to enter three characters for your high score initials. Uh-oh. Continuity error. Well, that's not continuity. It's just not factual. It's like how all the arcade machines in that game have like, or in that in that show have like a flat screen monitors on them and stuff. Do you want to win a box of limited edition pumpkin spice sure. craft mac and cheese? I'm down. Of course you do. Tag us in a tweet with hashtag pumpkin spice KMC plus hashtag sweepstakes for a chance to win. I I will do that. Wait, I did that and I won. <laughs> I have the craft pumpkin spice mac and cheese. No, they did it in the US also and I won one of them. It's crazy. I have the best luck in the world. I almost got two of them there. Yeah, I have a box of the Kraft Mac and Cheese on the way. Well, it's not on the way. They said it would take 10 to 12 weeks to deliver.
In 1985 Namco released Dig Dug 2, sporting a much different playing vibe than the original. Players can make sections of an island split off, killing anyone left in that section, including Dig Dug himself if you're not careful. It wasn't as popular as the original and is one of the rarest arcade machines to acquire. Since no cabinets were ever shipped to America from Japan, in fact, so you can't weird. even find an image of one existing online. Shaky Eyes KPOP Cheer. I don't think I've ever played Big Dug 2. Maybe at some point. Is it a bummer or is it fun? I guess that's the real question. Uh, and yeah, the Taco Bell Xboxes, so the free entries don't start online until uh, the 22nd. I would suggest everyone. I can give you the, the strategies for winning your own Xbox system via Taco Bell. It all starts on the 22nd, though. If I give you guys my strats, one of us will win one. <laughs> right? I think that's how it works. We mail it to each other to share. That sounds expensive. Let's be honest here. Dude, I'm dropping rocks like someone that's actually okay at Dig Dug. Ah! I got the high score. The champion is me. Oh, it's a different looking level. What the hell? Yeah, my memories of this game were, I played a ton of the Xbox Live version of this. And it was like, it had that one achievement where on the first level, you have to eat every single piece of dirt. And I tried to do that for so long, and I just couldn't do it. It's so hard. It's one of the hardest achievements I know. On April 8, 2017, Donald Hayes would get the world record on Dig Dug. With an impossible to reach score of 5, 429, 010. Wanna know what's even more impressive than that? He's right. also the world record holder on Centipede Joust. Millipede and holds records on over 30 other games. Dig Dug is so well known, he even made an appearance in Disney Animation's 2012 hit Wreck It Ralph. Really? While it was just a passing few seconds on screen, it shows that Dig Dug can still tunnel his way into any medium. Remember, like, the, the subplot of, uh... I got an extra... I got an extra boy. Uh, the subplot of... Uh, King of Kong, where Steve Sanders was trying to win the Joust world record. I don't know if he held it at that point. I mean, it does say on April 2017, so probably not. <laughs> wow, I'm not... This game's hard. Big Doug's a tough one. We'll play a couple more games of Dig Dug. Go for the world record now. I don't have it in me to get 5.4 million. Can you imagine if you got the world record for Dig Dug, but you got it on an N64? <laughs> Just imagine. This is annoying music. Like, really bad loop. I don't want to continue game, though. I mean, I could, but I don't think that's the right spirit here. K-pop merch. What a weird emote. That one's a weird one. Yeah, maybe we'll do, like, two more games of this, and then we'll, we'll call it for this collection. It's been fun, though. All veggies run? You want just you want me to just drop rocks? 
I don't think I have it in me, though. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up. I got greedy, and I fucked up. How many veggies are there? Give me the hard hitting facts. Oh, I fucked up. I don't have enough time to get to the turn up. Oh, it's too far! I can get him! Oh! <laughs> I look like a smurf. You know that? Dig a maze down deep in the ground. When a flower sprouts, you play another round. Use your pump just like a bazooka. Use it to puff up the bad, bad puka. Pump up Figar, put out his flame. Is this an Eat actual... all the veggies and win the game. Is this an actual rap? Yeah, Taco, I probably, if I wasn't streaming right now, I'd probably be watching that, honestly. <laughs> Just to see. Just to see it, you know? You recited this to me and we oh man, how did I not fucking remember anything? Dude, my memory is so bad. Ed's Big Dug page. Ed's a super fan, what can I say? I got second. Pretty good, right? I wait for the timer to tick down. Tick tock. Tick tock. Go for the world record. This game doesn't know what the world record is, though. What do you think the world record was? in the year 99 when this came out. Isn't that like the crazy thing about world records? Is you think about how long people have competed to get like certain world records, and then the second someone beats it, and like people are competing, they're like all beating that world record like left and right. He got the carrot. <laughs> this isn't good. It's actually very bad. That was actually a pretty slick play, huh? Who would have sunk? I had it in me. Is this one of those games that for like world record, there's just like one specific strategy that works every time? I suppose most arcade games, that's just the way their AI is programmed. That they just kind of work. Because the computer always acts in like a predictable way. Run's going pretty well.
<laughs> oh my god. Ooh, you know what? Sacrifice. Sometimes you just gotta sacrifice. I did lose the cucumber for all that, but you know what? Big points, big points. another cucumber unless those are like green beans that's the problem with like the green shaped the green shaped <laughs> the green like curved fruits and vegetables i guess they're all vegetables in this case but they all look the same when they're pixelized i didn't get the eggplant i got greedy This is this is trouble right here. This is an outdated factoid. <laughs> outdated. Not many players can claim to have accomplished or even seen the end of Dig Dug. But as do many classic arcade games from that era. Mm -hmm. Dig Dug comes to an inevitable conclusion during stage 256. 256 is crazy. Reaching that threshold was not easy, to say the least. Besides the fact that most gamers never last long like enough me. to see stage 10 or 20. Donald's game took almost 5 hours to accomplish with a final game time of 440. 12. All right, one last, one last game of Dig Dug. And then we move on to some basketball. Deal? Deal. I'm talking about basketball. Basketball. We can cut him off. <laughs> That's a dick move. Got it. I thought it was going to disappear before I could pick it up, but you know what? For once in my life, I did it. I couldn't turn around. I tried to turn around, couldn't do it. If I would have went up to that hole, I probably would have been fine. of uh of dig dug huh things to say about arcade games. So we'll uh, take a break from it, 
we'll resume when we get to the Midway Collection. We, oh, we puka juggling. <laughs> Ugh, terrible game that was. GG. GG. I'm calling it on this game. We got like an hour and a half out of it. Honestly, arcade games, always a good time. <sighs> always a good time. This will be an interesting one to rate. Like, how do you rate a game like this? It's really hard. Like, do you have to kind of balance out, like, what's in the collection and what's good? Because I feel like Galaxian is kind of a bad game. Like, it's fine. But... I've had enough of it. Namco Museum 64. Fun times for it's rated E for everyone.